Ribbit. I've been waiting for a use case for auto hotkey. So I think I finally found one. I was looking around. I, I, I was on, actually I heard, saw on Amazon maybe that there was a common list book. Uh, and it was uh, programming and common lisp. And there's only two reviews, I think, but one of the reviews, the guy said it was like the C book, the K&R book. So I figured any book that someone compares to K&R is worth checking out. It's like this book reminds me of the C programming language by Dennis Ritchie and Brian Kernahan. Simple to the point, blah, 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 blah. So I figure it's worth checking out. So I dug around in the normal spots and I couldn't find the book really. And I went ahead and looked at archive.org and they had the book over there. And you can loan it for an hour or you can loan it for 13 days. And in the past, you didn't have to worry about this, but it seems there was a lawsuit or something towards archive.org. And so now the copyright books, if you want to download them, then it's a DRM, DRM protected and you have to download like the Adobe DRM software. I don't want to put that stuff on my computer. So you can just come over here and check the book out and then read it here. So no big deal. You can keep it for an hour or 14 days. If they only have one copy of a book, you can only keep it for an hour, but as long as no one else checks it out, you can keep checking it out over and over. Same thing with the 14 days. So, uh, there's a couple of catches to this. And one of them is that it seems anyways, I was just playing around with this one book, trying to, to get it is when you're on a page, if you're going to try to download the page, you can't be, on the page. So I always try to stay one on the viewer. So I try to stay one page ahead of the page I'm downloading one. And two is if I try to download page 10 right now, if I haven't gone down here and basically cached page 10, then it's going to unbar the book from me. And same thing if I look at, like if I try to download this page while I'm on it in the viewer, it's going to unbar the book from me and you have to go back and rebar the book. So right now I have 13 days left cause I just borrowed it and it's 14 days total. So I think it just takes one day away automatically. So in order to find the book pages, what we can do is come over here, right click and inspect. And then if you just click this button right here and click right here, then you'll see, this right here and right here, 001.jp2 is the first page of the book. And you can see right here, it's a BR page image is a class and it's an image source right here. And it's inside the image tag. So what I can do is if I close this right here, let's say hit F12 and close that, Control Shift J will open up the JavaScript console. And if I'm over here in the JavaScript console, then what I can do is type uh, dollar sign, and then try to get that tag that was over there. And it was uh, an image source tag. And then if we go back over to elements and inspect, then you can see the different like parts of the source parts, what I'm going to target right here. And so if in the array of the first one, so you can also see like right here, I also say like dollar sign zero to bring this, this part over here. If I go back over here and add uh, the element zero right here and then dot current source.
I might have to be in another one of these. I can't remember how this works. So I said SCR. So maybe not. Of course. Get my uh, mouse cursor out of the way. Maybe I can see the letters. And so if you see right here, it's the URL that I just saw a minute ago. And here's the uh, page one, JP2. And so if I just go like this, and if I come over here and say notepad, and then type notepad, and then copy this. And so if I paste, then it's just pasting notepad, right? But if I come over here and do the same thing I did a minute ago, and just put copy right here, and then put parentheses around that and hit enter, then if I go back over here and I paste, now I'm, that copied that to my clipboard. So now I have the URL for the first uh, page. And so that's how I can get the URL for the first page. Another way to do this was just to come over here and click on this and then right click right here and then copy link address. The only reason I'm not doing that right now is because I'm trying to show a way to automate with auto hotkey because I use, used to use when I was working, I use auto hotkey to do tickets. So anytime a ticket, like in service now, remedy, it doesn't matter what ticketing system, but any ticketing system where you're getting the same ticket over and over more than once a week, more than once a month, then you can write scripts. Let's say if when some, a new hire comes in, there's a new hire and it sends you an email. We need to create this new user in active directory, blah, 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 whatever. And they give you the name and then maybe a username and the first name, last name and whatever information that you populate your active directory with, then you can just go into your, like use auto hotkey, go use a search inside your ticketing system and just look for new hires, let's say. And then usually that's gonna be all the same format because someone HR or whatever is sending them in and they send them in and it's just all automated. <clears throat> There's some kind of format. And so you can go grab all the details out and then go in there, fill up, like add the person to active directory, then copy the information, put it inside the ticket and then you know, update the ticket, save the ticket, close the ticket, and then go to the next ticket. And so you can just pretty much automate all kinds of stuff with AutoHotKey. It's definitely not the way you'd want to do it if you have backend rights to do stuff. But the interesting thing about AutoHotKey is whatever you can do as a user, you can automate with AutoHotKey. And so that's, I don't have a good example because I don't, I don't have access to a ticket system right now. And if I did, then I couldn't show it to everybody anyway, because it'd probably be proprietary to some company or whatever. So I'm just going to use this as an example because the book's in here in, in uh, archive.org. So basically what I'm going to do is just create a, create a auto hotkey script. And let me uh, CD Let's say uh, CD to CD junk, let's say. All right, and then inside of here, I'll just say like archive.org. Oops, I don't want it to be archive.org. Uh, control X, F, Control X, Control F, and then archive. Dot AHK. I'm so used to doing org files now. So um, normally people will use auto hotkey. Mm, a lot of places I've been, uh, hosting companies or Linux administration type of companies, uh, cloud type environments and stuff like that. The people who work there, I'd say at least maybe 20% of the people will use auto hotkey, sometimes more, sometimes less but they use it in a very simple fashion. So it's kind of like this. So first thing we can do is like say control. Uh, so this is the control and this is alt, alt. So control alt and then one, and this is just something I like to do. So it's to reload. So for me to reload my script, I hit control alt one and it'll reload my script. And then in this case, I want to use F4 to pause the script. Auto hotkey scripts, you usually want to babysit these things, especially like one time I was working at an oil company and on Friday, they laid off 300 people on Monday, they laid off 600 people. I was the only person in the company that could remove the people from active directory. The only person that 
had access to, to the, all the tools. So basically, I have to go into Active, like from the PowerShell, I'm supposed to be doing it from Active Directory or whatever. I just run everything through PowerShell. So I have a PowerShell script that goes in there and, and removes the people, let's say from Active Directory. And then an, another PowerShell script that sets their email to delete in 30 days because that was like policy for the company. After someone leaves the company in 30 days, you have to delete that person. And then there was some stuff I had to do in uh, PeopleSoft. And the PeopleSoft, I didn't have access to the app, but I had access to a web page. And that was pretty cool too because I couldn't target certain fields in the web page because AutoHotKey, like it's been a long, long time, like almost 10 years since I played with some of this stuff. So I don't know about now, but it didn't really have any, any like native way to access the DOM really. So you had some person was working on the library, but I never really messed with it. But if it's an app, you can target fields and stuff. So you can get your mouse cursor over this and AutoHotKey can know where the mouse is and stuff too. And you, so it'll know like what the pixel dimensions is. And if you start clicking on stuff, it can tell what certain fields are if you're inside like this field right here. And the browser doesn't work that great, but probably this one it could because it doesn't have to do with HTML. It can target any field in any program. It wouldn't matter if it's like GIMP or whatever. Every single program, it can target like all the different fields and stuff. It'll show you the name of a field. And so you can just tell it, hey, jump to this field in this particular program. You can tell it to jump to Firefox or whatever too. I'm just gonna use alt tabs here, but it can be more sophisticated. So now uh, I'll come back over here and just gonna add another script. Another thing I like to add is a, like an abort. Some people like to put this at the bottom of the file, but I'll just put it at the top. And a lot of times maybe your pause and your, like over here I'm reloading with control one, which is fine. But whenever you want to pause or you want to reload, sometimes you only want to use a single key. Because if I was to use like control alt, let's say two, you have to hit like the auto hockey is going to be typing stuff. So if I hold down control alt for a second and then hit two, it's going to have already, it's possible auto hotkey would already have typed some stuff and it's going to mess that shortcut up. So you almost have to hit like control alt two simultaneously, all three of them at the exact same time for auto hotkey to know that I want to exit. And in certain circumstances, like deleting people from the company, you really, you don't, when your, if your script starts to go wary, you want to hurry up and close it real quick. And so normally I'll put a lot more pauses than I'm going to put in this one just to give me some time to react if the script started going haywire. Cause I, like I said, you know, for instance, if I was at a company, I might not have control of a pop-up that says computer just updated. It's going to shut down. Do you want to shut down now or an hour or two hours or however long they give you? Right. When that thing pops up, it's going to take focus. And when you're using auto hotkey to automate stuff, the mouse and keyboard, you can't use them because it's using them. So it's a really messed up way to automate sometimes, but it's really convenient if it's the only way you've got to do it, right? If you have no access to other stuff. And so I'll say exit app right here. And then normally a lot of people will use it like this. So if I just do this key right here, and then if I put a semicolon, let's say is the one I like to use. So, uh, I was testing that out a minute ago. So, if I, if I go like this and then I put a semicolon and then ribbit here. And if I say ribbit, 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 and then I could say like a slash in. And then right here I could do another one. Cause a lot of times what you're really going to be doing is something like this. Thank you for contacting. And then I would say like, thank you for contacting Ribbit Corp. Uh, my name is Ribbit. How may I assist you? And then you can put a like, slash in here or whatever. And then now if I came over here, let's say, where was this at? C Junk Archive. So if I come over here, C, and then I go, oops, I didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. Archive. And so if I come over here and run the script right here, now I'll come over here and I'll type notepad just so I have a safe place to play. And then when I'm in here, if I type the semicolon and then rib, it'll type the ribbit ribbit out, right? And so if I say semicolon 
thank you for contacting. Then as soon as I type thank you and hit the C, it's automatically just going to run that. And so a lot of times whenever you're talking to someone in chat or people are, if you're in support or something and people are talking in chat, then a lot of people have used auto hotkey like this. And so you'll be like, you know, thanks. You'll put your signature in here. Basically anything you say more than once a day, for me, even once a week, you're going to add into your, into your thing, into your auto hotkey script and just keep adding whatever. And so you'll see if you work there for a year, there's no telling how many of these things you'll have. You might have a greeting for certain chat rooms or like, thank you for contacting. And then you'll have like a chat room or thank you for contacting in uh, a ticket or whatever, however you want to name these things. You can name them however you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit the script real quick and then uh, get rid of this. So that's how you can use it. It's just auto hotkey a lot of times is used like this inside a environment. And a lot less people realize how powerful auto hotkey is, I think. So, you know, well, yeah, I will say powerful just because if you're creative, I'm going to claim if you're creative, then you can use auto hotkey to do all kinds of cool stuff. And so I'm going to try to simulate that here by exaggerating a little bit of how to get this book, let's say. And so what I can do, I, I close that script, but I could just keep the script running right now. So the script's running in the background. I just didn't want it to be running those. Uh, like now if I type rib, it's not going to do that anymore. If I thought, type, you know, thank you for contacting, it's not going to do that. So I don't want that running anymore. But right here, if I come over here, let's say, it's easier to see in the browser. If I hit control Alt one, you'll see that the cursor just spun for a second. So that's reloading the script. So right now it doesn't do anything. And so I'll just put one more of these little shortcuts that I have, and it's going to be control alt and this one right here, control Alt two. And this right here is going to run the script. So if you don't put anything after that, this is just, you can use a semicolon for a comment, but maybe it's easier if I put two of them to separate all the stuff that's going on. So this runs the script. So now control, control alt one will reload the script and control alt two will run the script. F four would pause the script and F two would exit it. So if I saw the, saw the script going crazy, I'd start spamming F2. So you see right there, if I hit F2, it killed the, it just killed the H right there, which was auto hotkey. So uh, if I come back over here and save it, and then I'll come back over here and run the script one more time, and then get back in this file. And really I don't need to be running the script, but I uh, just showing it, it doesn't really hurt right now, I guess, unless I mess something up. So that will run the script for me. And the first thing I want to do is run, let's say, WSL. Because like I said, I'm going to be kind of exaggerating in here. So I'm going to do part of the work in WSL. So if I run, uh, usually I just run Ubuntu. So let's just say like right here, uh, if I go like this and say Windows R and then type Ubuntu, this is going to run my Ubuntu, right? And then now if I hold down the Windows key and hit R, Speaking of the Windows key, this is another little gotcha too, is if you hold Windows and hit I, it brings this up. If you go to System and then go to Multitasking, and then right here, when I snap a window, show what I can snap next to. And what that does if I have that on is, if I was to say CMD, for instance, and then I hit to the right, see how it's jumping this up? This is something I don't want. To get out of this, I could hit Escape, or I could hit alt tab. The problem with that is it's not consistent because sometimes it will pop that window up and sometimes it won't. So let's say if I have this window here and this window here. So let's put this window over here. And then now if I was to run CMD, let's say, and then I move it over, see how it did not pop that up. And so right here, if I hit escape, you would think, oh, just hit escape a couple times. But if I hit escape and then hit a letter, it doesn't always type, well, this is in CMD, and I'm trying to work in WSL. So if I hit escape in here and hit T, it's not always going to type T, like right the second time it didn't type it. Because like a lot of times if you hit Alt and then the button, it's like hitting Alt something. So Alt F is also the same thing as Escape F. So that's just something to keep in mind. So the best thing to do is to go back over here and turn this off. If you like that feature, then you can turn it back on after when you're not automating. 
So now whenever I type Windows CMD, it should not pop that up ever again because I turned that uh, multitasking thing off. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this right here and then close this right here also. And then if I want to go like this, I'm going to type Ubuntu and then move that over to the right. After I move that over to the right, I'm going to run Tmux. So I can, just because I'm used to being in Tmux, I can be in more than one window like that if I need to be and detach and all that kind of stuff. So this is the type of stuff that I'm going to put over here. So I'm going to exit back out of here, let's say. I just want that window open for a minute. So what I'll do is come back to my script, which I move to the other side now. And over here, I couldn't see my cursor for a minute there. Uh, So here I'll just say like set up, set up WSL. And then what I'm gonna do is what I just did, I'm gonna send. And the way I called Ubuntu was to say, uh, right win, so that's the right windows key. I'm gonna push this down and then I'm gonna hit R because that's gonna run. And then I'm gonna let go of the uh, right windows key. So right windows key up. So when I hold down the windows key and hit R, and let it go, that's what that button right there just did. So this is holding the Windows key down, hit R, and then let it go. And then, uh, I can probably just put this all in one line. And this is where uh, certain things, certain things are gonna have to be timed. But when I hit Windows R, that box comes up really fast. And if I type Ubuntu and then hit Enter, then I probably don't have to sleep too much right there. And so I'm just going to try to put this all on one line. And I could also put enter right here probably. And then it's going to do the enter also. But whenever it runs, you won't be able to see it. And it could could be too fast. Like if it if the computer goes too fast and runs something before that box pops up, then it's not going to work correctly. So I'm just going to put, in this particular one, I'm going to put a sleep. I'm going to say sleep 500. And then I'm gonna send this. And then I'll just save the document because I'm used to saving all the time. So what this is just gonna do is Windows R Ubuntu sleep for half a second, and then it's gonna send the enter key. And mostly this is just for when the script runs, you'll be able to see the Windows thing pop up because this thing can go so fast that you can't see it. When working with, let's say a browser window, you're gonna to have to put more wait times in there sometimes because it's gotta wait for the page to load and stuff like that. So. A lot of times what I'll do is just put like a delay. So I'll say like delay equal two or six and just change that variable. And then down here you can say like 500 times delay. And then that way you can, for instance, if I'm at work and the network's fast, then I'll put this as a, a one, let's say. And then if I'm at work and the network's slow, I'll put that as a two or 1.5 or 1.25 or whatever. And then if I'm at home on a VPN, I'll put this as a three or a four and then if I'm at home on a VPN and the VPN's slow, and I'll put this as a six or a seven or eight or whatever, and this will slow down the script or what and stuff. And that's probably that's really important to do probably whenever you're working with like deleting users or adding users to the company or whatever, messing with the ticket system, you're closing tickets and you're saying, Hey, thanks, I fixed your problem. You want to make sure you sit here and do all these things correctly and you make let the page load fast enough. Here I'm just trying to grab a book or, so it's not that big of a deal. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and just try to like play this by ear, I guess. And can come over here and change these. This one in particular, like I said, is just so you can see it though. And so I just from habit, I always sleep after stuff. Uh, and they're in milliseconds. So 1000 would be one second if, I'm, if I remember correctly. And so now we wanna say to, do again is I wanted to send that. I opened up Ubuntu and then I send it to the right. I wanted it to be over to the right. So now I'm going to send and then I'm going to say uh, right when down and then I'm going to send the right arrow. So this is the right arrow key and then I'm going to let pick up pick up the Windows key. And then here I'll just sleep for uh, 50 let's say because it should be able to move that over pretty quick. 
And then right here, I'm going to send tmux because I wanted to open up tmux. Uh, maybe there's not a real reason right here to open up tmux, but I'm just, I always open up tmux, so I might as well do it in my script too. And then 500, I'll just sleep. And once again, that's just so you can see tmux be typed out. There's no reason for it to actually v hunt 500. And actually, I could put the enter up there by the tmux. There's no reason to put the enter down here after the 500, other than to show you, else it's just going to go so fast you can't even see it type anything. And so send tmux, sleep 500, and then uh, enter. So enter is going to start tmux. So uh, I'll comment this in a second, let's say. And then let me just finish this one part of uh, setting up some WSL stuff. And then now I hit enter. Tmux has started. It's moved over to the right. And here I'll just sleep once again for one second. Just so it's visible on the screen. And then I'm going to send uh, CD. And then I'm going to change the directory from WSL to my, the C side into the junk folder that I cr just created. And, or that I'm working in where I put my Emacs file. And I'm gonna create a directory called archive. And I'm gonna save the pictures and archive of the JPEGs of this uh, book over here. And then I'm gonna sleep for 500 again, which is half a second. And then I'm gonna send enter. And then I'll sleep for 1000, which is one second. And most of this right here, it would run real fast and it's, these timings are mostly just so you can see them or else it's just going to go so fast like i said and then let's see if we come over here and we want to comment these and we could say uh i guess this would be like uh windows plus r so i don't know what y'all call it when r is what like windows r is what i call that button but when r uh, learn to so uh like start ubuntu plus uh windows plus r let's say ubuntu. and then sleeps just for the heck of it this is actually entering the command so uh hit return i guess hit enter hit return just so you Hit return on command above. And then right here is to move uh, WSL to right side of screen. And then run tmux. And then actually that's just hitting enter for that command above. And then this is just making a directory. Uh, cd to dr directory and create folder to save so c directory create folder to save file I mean, you should just be able to read that stuff. So comments are kind of irrelevant, but sometimes it's nice to have something to look at, especially once this thing starts flying around. So now we could test this out, let's say. So if I say control X, control S, and then I can come over here and see if my file was still running. I don't think I closed it. So it's still running. So now I can come over here and if I hit Yeah, so none of that stuff matters yet. So I hit uh, Control-1 to reload my script. You saw the little cursor blink, then so it reloaded the script. And so now if I hit Control-2, it's going to run that. So it ran Ubuntu, it opened it up, and Command Archive, not found, okay? Because that was a dumb mistake. Uh, so I'll just exit out of these two, let's say, and then come back over here. And it has to be make dir, right? So, and make dir archive. And then, uh, I 
don't want it to be that long. Create folder to save files. We don't need the CD there. Hopefully everybody knows what the CD does. And I make the IR too. I was talking so much I forgot to type that thing. Okay, so now control X, control S to save. And then I'll just come back over here and control Alt one to reload my script, control Alt two to run the script again. So this time, hopefully, now I got to make it. So if I type ls right here, I'm in the folder I wanna be, and there's an archive file there. It's blank at the moment. So the next time my script runs, it's gonna redo this again. So I can just remove that if I want, or I could comment out that stuff. So now that part of the script is working. So if I come back over here again, now I can say, uh, uh, use JavaScript console like we did a minute ago. So a minute ago, I say F12 to get rid of this. Now if I hit Control Shift J, it's gonna bring up the JavaScript console. So I wanna hit Control Shift J. Let me think. So I'm in the other window first though. So I was in the WSL window, right? So that means that we have to send the, so we'll say like use JavaScript console to get URL a first page, but we can put that lower so they don't get too long. So the first thing we wanna do is to send an alt tab. So alt, alt, uh, tab. This is going to change me from the WSL window back into this window. And then I'm going to alt tab and then I'm just going to sleep 50 to give it, you know, a little bit of time to catch up. And then I'm going to send, uh, control shift J to open up the JavaScript console. And so this is open Java script console. And then we'll sleep again. And then I'll send a control tab, let's say. Like now I open up the JavaScript window. If I come over here, control shift J. So if I hit control shift J, I can just start copying that. So what was it again? We said copy dollar sign uh, image. Uh, zero dot current source and then enter and then say sleep 1000 just so it can be seen again and then I'll send the control shift J again to get rid of it. You could also hit F6, F6, F6. It would bring me back to this window right here. So if I'm over here and hit F6, 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 now I'm in this window where I can move these around, right? So that's another way to get there. But in certain circumstances, if I was working in between the source code the whole time, going back and forth, then I probably would want to use the F6, 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 but I can just hit control shift J again to get rid of this. So I'll hit control shift J again to get rid of that. So that's gonna close JavaScript console. And then of course, sleep 100 and then save that. And so now we should be able to test out the script so far, let's say. And 
you know, when you're really doing this, you probably comment this out and then just run this part. And then if this part and this part work, then you can, you know, comment this part out and keep going down the street or whatever. But for the sake of this part, I'll just go ahead and run it real quick. So now if I come back over here, control alt one, reloaded it, and then uh, hit control alt two. And see what's in my uh, buffer right here. So I messed up something else again. So and I need to run. If I copy that and then come back over here, control shift J and then paste that. And then one of then yes, that worked. So send control tab alt tab and then sleep fifty. What happened over here? I had I was here, change this, control shift J, and then I should be able to just send stuff right there. So what happens if I hit control tab here? Let's try it again. So reload that. Control first get rid of that maybe. And then reload it. So control one and control two. Just gotta run the Ubuntu stuff. The file thing already exists, so I should have moved that. And it's an unexpected token again. Oh. So notepad. Uh, actually I wanted to copy something else. Control A, control C, close that, don't save. Uh so I'm missing Let's change this to 100 and then open the console. So what might be happening is it's not having enough time to type everything out. Was I paying attention over there? What it was saying? So now let me go ahead and let's say, so I don't keep opening these other windows. I'll go ahead and comment out this. So put a block comment right here. And then I'll come over here, control one, control two. Ooh, this is why you want to be in the right window when stuff goes. So I put a star that time in the slash. So here we go. Uh, star slash, save this. Oh, because I'm changing windows. So maybe I'll put this uh, in the other window. Change back to browser. Like move back to browser maybe, reloader. Move back to browser. And then put the sleep 100 here, I guess. And it's just trial and error. Um, it's, you get you know, good at this, I guess, then maybe. So uh, if I do that, and then reload this. There, it looked like it worked that time, maybe. So if I paste, there we go. So I think it was the timing. What's happening before is I didn't have uh, enough sleep there, right here. Uh, I changed this value to three, and it wasn't like uh, inputting the whole command there is what was happening. So a lot of times when you're doing this, if something's kind of acting funky like that, then it might be that you're you're not waiting enough time. So just to test that one more time, like let's come over here, control one, control two, 
and then now it's copying it uh, before it was throwing an error. So you can test that by saying notepad right here and then copying that. And so now if we were to paste, we just have like that notepad sitting there, right? Come back over here, control it one, control it two. And once again, I'm in the wrong window. And this is why a goofy mistake like that, if you were, you know, doing stuff at work or something, then you would want to be a lot more careful than me just sitting here running around and, and uh, testing it before you hit enter. Basically, before you ever hit enter any time, you would never put the enters here like I'm doing. You would just let it run. And then if everything worked, then you'd hit the enter and then test it out. So control one, control two. Uh, the copy command didn't work that time. So I don't know if you saw that, but Windows run, notepad, control A, control C. It closed that window, but it had a an error there. So uh, control one, control two. Control one, control two. There you go. And so if I come over here and paste again, then it's there. But maybe even change this to be 350, I guess. I don't, like, right here is not a big deal because I only have to do this one time. So uh, to get the, the first URL. After that, I'm not going to have to use the JavaScript console anymore. And so to get rid of the JavaScript console, I probably don't have to wait as long. But I'll just put a 200 here since the other one was messing up. So now... Uh, I can come over here and let's say, now this part of the script's working, let's say. So I'll just come over here and comment that out. Now I'm going to try to get the first page of the book. And like I said, you want to be on a different page than the one you're trying to download. So before right here, I think the best way to switch pages is just to hit the right arrow. So if I hit right arrow and left arrow, it'll change the whole page. And another thing to keep in another one of these little gotcha things is if I hold down the arrow key, see how it's just toggling the same page back and forth? So this is just, I think, something they put in there so you can't flip through the pages too fast. So you can't hold down that. So that's another thing. We'll have to put enough weight whenever we switch pages that it's not sitting here jumping back and forth like this because I'm holding the right arrow down. And usually, like, if I hold the left arrow down, it doesn't matter. Like, the left arrow key works, see? The left arrow key will go. The right arrow key won't. So they'll let you scroll up like that, but they won't let you scroll down. Uh, so that's something else to keep in mind. So here we're going to say, get uh, first page of book, let's say. So now... We get the first page of the book. Uh, the first thing I'll do is now I'm going to move this over to the left. Because uh, I don't I don't really need that to be full screen, right? So I'm going to work with it like this for the rest of the time. I was just having that open all the way so you could see the JavaScript window when it was open. Oops. Make sure that's closed. Yeah, okay. And so now if I was to open it up, then control shift J. It's just so you can see better. Uh, but this is the way I'm actually going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and close these two. And this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that archive folder again. And get rid of these guys. And then come back over here. And now we have all that in the first page of the book. So. Uh, So I'm over here in this window, and the first thing I want to do is hit the right arrow to go to the next page of the book, because I never want to try to download the page I'm on. Because if you try to download the page you're on, around like, I want to say like 60, 70, maybe even 80, maybe even higher sometimes, 80% of the time, it'll unloan the book to you, and you have to get the book reloaned to you. You just have to click a button to do that, but it's just annoying. And you don't want that to happen in the middle of your script either. So that's why the timing is kind of uh, important. So here we're going to send. And then we're going to send the right, right arrow key. And all this is going to do is change 
viewer, like uh, book viewer to the next page before downloading. And then sleep 300. Uh, here, you kind of want to wait depending on your connection with archive.org because sometimes archive.org goes so slow. Uh, so sometimes it's going to take forever. And that's why I said you might want to put delays. So on this particular one where you're hitting right, it might be a spot where you want to, you want to put 600 or 800 or whatever. I'm just going to try to do this kind of fast because the video is going to be super long of watching this thing try to download. I guess you could watch it at double speed or something. But so now if I send that over, so now that right, it's just going to change the page. So it's like this, come over here, change the page, sleep 300, give that page some time to load before you try to download it. And then I'm going to send uh, control T, which is going to open up a new tab. So open new tab. And then uh, the tab has to open, right? So we could probably sleep 100, let's say. And then when I open the new tab, I want to send a control L and a control L is going to put me in a URL bar. So if I come over here and hit control L, it puts me up in the URL bar. So uh, what I'm going to do is open a new tab, hit control L to put me in the URL bar. Uh, jump to URL bar and then sleep. Jump to the URL bar. So you probably don't have to sleep very much, right? Sleep 10. It's just nice to put those sleeps in there sometimes when stuff gets finicky. And you can take these out, move them around and try to like optimize everything. So then I'm going to send a control V to paste because I have copied the URL of the first page, the first page of the book. So I'm going to hit control V. Uh, and on this one, well, once again, I could hit put enter right here, but it's going to hit control V enter really fast. So maybe I'll just say uh, control V and then sleep. 100, which you probably don't need to sleep that much, but it just lets you see see it so it's not going too fast, I guess. And then I'll send an enter. Send, enter. And so this is gonna paste your all uh, first page of the book. Into URL bar, I guess, in case you forgot the one above. And then the inner is just actually, you know, uh, in this case, this will actually take us to it, right? So this will go to, uh, say, pasted, I guess, pasted URL. And then this is going to load that page. So you might want to sleep here a little bit longer. So let's just try a sleep of 300, let's say. And I might have to make that one longer. I don't know. So now we're going to send uh, control S. So right here, I'm waiting only 300 milliseconds before I'm trying to save this document right here. Uh, if your connection or the you know archive.org is being really slow, then you might have to double or even triple some amounts. So now we're going to save this. So this is actually to uh, save first page. And then on a sleep. Uh, I think I'm gonna sleep 300 here because it'll let you at least see the the save box pop up. And sometimes if you go too fast in the save box, then it's not gonna uh, register. You're like you'll you'll start like I have to save it and then I have to put the stuff. So I'm gonna start typing stuff and it's not gonna be enough time for it. And so here I'm gonna send. And so let's just say I came over here. Let's, well, you know what? That's enough that we could, uh, let's say, run this command, let's say. So let me make sure I still have this. So right now I don't have the correct thing in here. So I'm actually gonna have to do this one too. Because uh, I don't have the correct thing copied. 
So I'll say control X, control S. And then sleep 300, this is gonna save. Do I wanna save it yet? Yeah, yeah, because I wanted to show this. Okay, so if I say uh, control one, control two. So we get the URL there, I didn't see an error. And so now, right here, look where I'm at. I'm in this PC, uh, so I'm in basically the downloads folder. I don't want to be in the downloads folder because I'm working over in the, well, I don't have it closed because it's not running, but in the WSL, I created a folder, right? And so I created a folder, uh, C junk archive. So what I'm going to do here is if I hit X cancel one more time, I'm going to close this because another thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be like, I don't want to be on the same page. Remember? So since I don't want to be on the same page when I'm messing with this one, I don't want to open up a new page and try to go there again because sometimes it gets finicky about that too. If you open these up when this one's still open and you open another one real fast. So I'll close this window and then uh, what I'm going to do is just reload the script and then rerun it one more time. So notice whenever I come to save this, that this right here is highlighted, right? And for me to go to a different directory, the easiest way for me to do that right now is just tell it exactly where I want to save it to. So what I'm going to do is if when this is highlighted, like it was, if I hit the home button, it goes to the front. And then right here, I could type in C junk archive slash. And now it's going to save that JPEG in the C junk archive folder. And if you ever noticed your browser, once it saves it, it's going to start saving it there. So the next time I save, I don't have to put the C junk archive again, because it's going to remember the folder that I saved it in. Right? So all I really want to do is to copy this now and then send that. If I say send, uh, this, and then before that, I want to send the home key, right? Because it popped up. So I want to send the home key and then that's going to put me, over here and then I want to type this and once again I could put enter right here but just so people can just so it's for the sake of being able to see it uh, I'll now sleep and I'll sleep for 500 because it's half a second you know it's gonna go fast and then we could say that this right here is uh, uh, hit home button to put path before JPEG name. And then we could also say uh, other pages will save here without path, let's say. I won't have to add that again. And then we want to send the enter. So this will actually make that happen. And then sleep, say 200 for a second. So what am I doing? Uh, all I'm doing is going over there and hitting home and then typing that out and hitting enter. So uh, that's now gonna save the file. So I do wanna give it enough time to save the file before I keep going, right? And then here I want to, after I save this file, let's say, so I save that file. Now I'm going to want to control tab to get back over here because I want to go to the next page or whatever I'm going to do. So that'll be the next thing to do is to send uh, and the control tab. So right here, I also wanted to, I think I want to open up this folder so you can see them download though. So what would I need to do next? Uh, 
WSL would it be open and put me back in WSL? Do I need to be in the WSL right there? So if I say sleep 100, and then I want to say I want to send a window to R, so send R win down. So we're going to hold down the Windows key, and then I'm going to hit R. And then I want the right, I don't know why I keep putting right Windows key. Like I usually use the left Windows key when I'm typing. Like, why am I typing R Windows? It doesn't matter, but I try to do this the way I do it. And I don't know why I was thinking, like, just R Win sounds better than L Win, I guess. Oh, because of the run, probably because of the run command right here. So L Win up. Uh, basically, I just try to do anything like, everything like I would do it from the keyboard, I guess. That way, if you just use shortcuts and get around, you can just copy what you do most of the time. And then probably, so if I say, hold down that and hit Windows R, this is gonna pop up really fast. So maybe I can just start typing. And maybe I have to put some sleeps in here, but maybe not, so I guess it's a good time to check. So uh, now we wanna say, C, slash junk slash archive let's say slash and what this is going to do is it will open the uh, explorer and since i'm open up explorer maybe i'll give it a, a little bit of time and open folder in Explorer. So let's see files download this say. All right. So I want to say we should probably test it out now, right? So uh, so like if I come over here, I don't see it. It is still running. So. Uh, control R there. Sometimes you can't see it here. You come up right here and then you see it for some reason. It won't show it here. But if I come up here, it'll see it. So I don't know. Just if you are observing or pay attention to weird stuff like that, then sometimes it can help you out. So I'll hit control two again. Uh, so that time it looked like it copied it. I'm going to paste it over there. Ooh, 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 so something didn't like that. So see right here. That does not exist. See junk archive.org. Oh, did I delete that stuff? So remember, uh, I removed that folder. So that's fine because it's probably a good time to uh, test the whole script again, right? So just come over here, get rid of that, control S. And then we'll cancel out of this. And now we can close this. And we can even go to the first window because it, the script should now uh, do that for me. So I'm going to hit that. Now it's going to create that. It copied that URL. It's going to go grab that book page, the first page, and then see archive right here. And so I didn't hit the enter. And if I come back over here, I can look, oops, look, ls, and then uh, ls archive. And so we have one picture in there. So maybe I'll just leave that stuff in there for right now. Uh, so I can comment this out. Because that part's working. So let's not delete that folder this time. And then I want to say, even though, well, because I'm not copying anything yet, I might be able to, like, get away with, if that's still in my clipboard, I might be able to get away with coming this part out, so I have to wait for that right now either. Until, like, I have to uncomment that the next time I use the clipboard, maybe. Oh, and I'm using it right here, actually. To paste, I'm pasting the clipboard, but I'm not copying it, so that's fine. 
Uh, and then, so we're gonna, and I didn't hit enter here, did I? So send enter, which I wish I would have done at least when I ran that a second ago uh, to try to open that page up over there. And then now uh, after this, so if I run that, well, like this 500 might just be so you can see this without it disappearing real fast, let's say. And then right here, this one right here, I have to wait for the folder to open up. So I'll just put 300. And then I want to say, when I open up Explorer, I want to move it to the right. So I'm going to say send, and then R went down, and then right, and then, and then I did it again. L went up, oops. L went up, and then come over here and change this. I don't know why I keep getting R wins, but left one does. Right, yeah, that's what I always click. I haven't never even used the right one, I don't think. Uh, so, this will move more to the right side of the screen, I guess. And then sleep 300, like, I don't know. It shouldn't take too long, but it is moving something over there. And then now I want to alt tab. So the last window I was in though, JavaScript console. So I want to say that if I just alt tab, so uh, what if I say send uh, alt tab? All right, so I'm gonna run the script from here and make sure that's still there, okay. Uh, so if I come over here and I hit control at one, control one, control two, and it's probably best to put my cursor somewhere where I don't mind it being, so I'll put it right there. Ooh. I didn't click that window. So F2, 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 sorry, F2. Oh, I think the F2 split my screen right here. <laughs> so Control X1 to get rid of those other guys. Uh, Control XU, undo, Control XU, undo, Control XU, undo, Control XU, undo. There we go. Uh, hopefully that's the last place I was. And so this time, click where I want my mouse to be. Control one, not gonna work anymore because I killed my script, right? But this window did open up, so uh, I have to rerun re this command. So rerun it. Click over here. Control one. Control two. I'm gonna save that file. It's already there. So there'll be two of them. And so what I did over here was just open this window up. So if I close this window, uh, and you know maybe even I don't know if it's better to show, but you see like down here, right here where it says three items. So if I come over here, control one, control two, that will show how many items are inside that folder. It might be better to change this to be uh, view uh, details, just so you can see more of them load up maybe, but I don't know if it matters. Like, like I usually make things details, but I guess sometimes it's nice when they're pictures. And they're just like small icons maybe, or uh, medium icons. So maybe you'll be able to see a couple of them there, just to, just to see that their pictures loading up. But you probably could see more of them if it was a detail, so I guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, so. Let's make sure that works. 
do it like that. So I'll say uh, control one more time. So close this guy, close this guy, close this guy. Control one, and then control two. And see now there's four of them. And then down here when there's like more and more of them, you just they're gonna scroll off screen, and you can just see this little number right here counting. So you can probably close this dude. And then now we're moving down to the third page over here, let's say. So I'll just move to the second page, I guess. And then the Elwin down right, Elwin up. It's going to move that over to the right. And then I'm sitting an Alt tab to switch it back. So that's what I didn't check. So what I need to do is see which window I'm in. So I need to run this one more time, actually, because it's important to know where I'm at. So I need, right now I'm trying to pay attention to what window I, I end up in. So control two, it's going to go over here. And then right here, I'm in this window over here, if you can't tell. So if I hit control W, it'll close that. And if I hit right, it'll go over there. So that's where I want to be. So that was correct. And after I go there, I'm just going to sleep 500, let's say. Uh, Alt-Tab shouldn't take that long, but we can adjust the time later or whatever. And so this right here is a... Uh, no, back to browser, let's say. So now we'll be back in the browser there, that alt tab, and then seat 500. Uh, and then right here, I'm just going to say uh, page equals 0001. But we already got the first page. Uh, just because I'm setting a variable, I'm going to just sleep for 20 milliseconds and then just page plus plus. Uh, I could just, of course, make this two because I already downloaded page one, but I uh, just, if you're in, if you're loop breaks and you don't want to rerun the whole page or something, you might want to like start a page 50 or something, wherever it breaks. So it's just nice to have this in here. So I'll just say page one and then page plus plus. So it's actually going to go to two now. And also you see how to increment stuff, I guess. And then, uh, just because I did something, I'll put a weight there. And then right here, uh, loop, there's 322 pages and I'm already on one of these guys. So I'm gonna say loop, uh, for 321 times. And then so I'm going to hit control uh, tab. And the control tab would be this other window is open. And control tab would bring me back to this window over here. Uh, I should probably, maybe I shouldn't close that one because I have to run the rest of that script, I guess. So this is going to just switch me back. I don't understand where that white space comes from sometimes. <clears throat> so, uh, control tab. And this is going to uh, switch back to viewer because I'm in the, the download page right now. And, ooh, I don't like that. Uh, control X B and I'm going to go to a uh, scratch pad and just going to run a command real quick. Uh, set Q set Q default default uh, tab with two. And then right here I can sit, hit control X control E. Oh, you can see right here, this is a like Lisp interaction and it's Elisp mode. So uh, 
an EDIS document. And so that should have set my tab width. So if I go back where I was, uh, see my tab width mouse too right here. It was like giving me a whole, a whole tab a minute ago. Ooh, that didn't work. I go like this. I did it a second ago. Go XB. Go XB. Uh, well, I have to restart that thing or what? It looked like it worked for a second. Uh, this. I don't get anywhere. Okay. Um, what do I want to do now? So we're switching back over to the tab where that's at. We're gonna have to write it right. So sleep a hundred. Uh, send the right key to switch to the next page because we want to go over here and switch to the next page before we try to download the page. So we're not on the same page we're trying to download. So. Next. Oh, oh. Leave the next page. For trying to download. And then. Keep it up, baby. Sleep. 100 to give this a little bit of time to move to the next page. This might be not enough time, but switch the viewer, switch over here. I might put some more stuff. And then this loop is going to keep going. I'm just going to uh, say like end loop right here. Because I'm going to make another. I'm going to put an if right here. And I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try to say if page uh, equals 322. And what I'm trying to prevent here is being on the last page. Uh, you know, I just really don't like indentation sometimes. I'd rather just all be on one line. Can I uh, turn the age K mode off or something? But then the colors wouldn't be there. I don't know if y'all care about that stuff. But then I guess it's easier to see, so I'll just leave it alone. Uh, I've never used an indentation, so I was just trying it out. See if Emacs knew, like, and Vim knew it too. HK syntax, I guess. So if page equal 322, then I don't know. Do I need to sleep yet? Well, I don't know. For some reason, I just always like to put at least a little command in there to sleep a little bit. Uh, I'll just fix the indentation where it's a little bit prettier for me, I guess. After I'm done typing it. I'm going to send left. So it's send uh, left. So the idea here is to, and then here, now I can I don't think I want this indented, really. Uh, I guess it is a loop inside a loop, but I don't know. I'll leave it alone. So, uh, I'm going right, right, right. But on the last page, I don't want to be on the last page when I try to download it because it might uh, unborrow the book from me. And so now I try to go left. That way I'll go up one and then I can download the last page if that makes any sense. So, save this. And I don't know, is this a good time to test the script or do we just keep going and see how good, good this is? What all do we do? Move the next page before jump back to the browser. 
move that over. I kind of tested that part already. So switch to the viewer, but I would want to see, I guess, just to make sure there's no errors or something. So uh, if I come over here, control it one, control it two. Oh, F2, so it's going crazy. Whoa, I did not want to do it that many times. Uh, I meant to see how it started rolling. Uh, comment this out and then uh, change this to one, let's say. There we go. Because I'm going to test this out before I, I do it too many times. Let's just make sure one of them works. Okay, so that was working. I come back over here my front page and then go to my second page that I still have so like I don't have like I copied some stuff so I don't have my loop anymore uh I don't know if y'all caught that but I noticed it was pasting something weird a minute ago so I'm gonna have to come back over here on my next one and copy the URL again uh at this point I should just copy the URL into my file somewhere so I don't have to do this but I guess it doesn't hurt to test it out. Uh, so come back over here, and then what would be next? Where are we at? I guess this is the comments are uh, one reason to have this here. So now on this one, where's this if right here? So I want to say uh, F on last page. Go back one page. So not on same page as download. Else you might get uh, an un unborrowed book. And so now we'll come down in here. So that's only there, it goes to the left. So I guess we'll have to, if we're on this page, and then if you notice, like here's where I noticed that 10x thing up top, it like, you know, messed everything up there. Uh, so, and loops there. I'll just put a space there so it's less. And then here, we would be in the other, we would be in this window. So we need to go back to the downloads tab, which is now closed. So send control tab. And this would go, uh, go up to download tab, I guess is what we can call it. And then Sleep. Like, I don't know. Do I, when, do, how much do I need to sleep and stuff like this? So now we're going to jump to the to the downloads tab. And then when we jump to the downloads tab, we're going to manipulate the URL now. So we want to send a control L. Control L to go to the, uh, the jump to URL. I guess I could put that there. Uh, jump to URL. And then we'll sleep 50, let's say. And then uh, send an end. So uh, let's say, mm, I guess I can hit Control Shift J. And then if I was to say that dollar sign command, the dollar sign image command that we had earlier, this one right here. So if I just copy this, I don't have to do all that anyway, I guess. I could just come over here and uh, do that. And so now I have it again. So this would actually let me uh, go like this. As a cheater. Um, so now if I Control Shift J again, get off this page because I really shouldn't be on that page at all because I'm still playing with it. And then make sure this is the first page, which it is, you can see right here. And then I hit enter. So 
Now what we're going to try to do is we're, we were there and now we're going to jump back here. We're going to hit control L it'll put us here and then we want to hit end. So if I, if I'm right here and then I hit control L, everything's blue. If I hit end, I go to the end. So I'm going to say send end, send end. And then, you know, I don't think I need to sleep right here. I think I might. Well, this might get long, so uh, I'll just say sleep 50, I don't think. Like jumping to the end is not going to be very much uh, sleep time needed. We might even just be able to say 10. And then right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send. And then now we're uh, at the end of the file, right? And so if I hold down control, I'll jump one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and see right here at the JP2. So that's where I, I almost want to be, but I can't use controls anymore. So here I want to say, uh, send L control. How do you do this? Control like this, I think. Send L control uh, down. And then we're going to send, that was seven, seven left. So we'll uh, copy that, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we want to say L control up. And then I guess we could say sleep. Like once again, I'm hitting controls. See, I don't know. In between these right here, Maybe there needs to be some time gaps, but it's just jumping around the URL bar, so hopefully not. Uh, so sleep 10, I guess. And so this right here, basically it's going to move cursor. I just put the comment on the line below it, I guess. Move cursor. Uh, right before page number. And so if we were to come back over here, control L, hit in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you can see uh, end one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. You can see where I'm at right here. This is where I'm like, I'm trying to target, I guess it's the page number. And so seven brings me here. So I'm going to hit left one more time so here i would say uh send left without the control key this time and then uh without the control key so that's one two three four five six seven and then one left and then I want to hold down shift and go one, two, three, four. And you can't see that. So that was right here. And so I'll go left and then hold down shift. One, two, three, four. If I was to come right here and hold down control shift, it highlights too much. So I'm just going to hold down shift and go one, two, three, four. So I need to go hold down shift and go left four times. So we go left once. And then we say left shift down and then go left four times left and then uh, one, two, three, four, and then, uh, oops, the Z come on, oh, the Z's come out left shift up. Right, and then we'll hit backspace. So control X S and then we'll say three ten because once again it shouldn't take too much and I'll put my comments down here again. Uh and this basically is just gonna delete the page number. Delete delete page number. Uh save that. And so what I'm doing is Coming over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go over one, hold shift, one, two, three, 
four, and then hitting backspace. And that gets rid of the page number. So now I'm going to fill in the page number. And we set the page number above. And then, so right now the page number should be two. So, uh, now we're going to use like a, like a, what do they call this format? Format string. So send format. And then we want it to be uh, padded four characters. And so add the next page number added by four digits, let's say. And there's barely enough room for that. Other. That send format, and then uh, I think I missed a curly bracket right there. So parentheses, so parentheses, and this one's curly brackets. Curly brackets and quotes close, and page and parentheses close. So let's do another sleep. And it's just typing in those characters, so. I'm not worried about like a sleep really. I just added in there for my own sanity. And then just send an enter. And then now that we send an enter there, we can say uh, sleep 100 because that's reformatting it. And then sending the enter, that's actually going to try to download that page, right? And so uh, I want to say 200 or 300 here, I think. Uh, if it's too slow, I'll speed it up. If I put 100, it, it I'd be lucky if it's working. And if it does, the boxes are probably going to, like, well, anyway, I'll just do it like this because... I think it'll be better. And then right here, if we did that, is this like, should I increment the page here? Like no, because I gotta save it. So I sent that there, I hit enter. It loads the page, but it hasn't saved it yet. So, uh, right now the page is gonna be loaded. And all I think I have to do is hit a send a control S, I believe. And then after I send control S, uh, sleep 200, just to give the box. I wonder, because if I hit sleep and then hit enter, it might not even be able to see it. So I'm gonna try this one as 300 too. And if it's too slow, then I can change it, I guess. But if I, like 100, maybe 200, 100, you probably came in, but barely see it blink sometimes. 200, you might be able to see it blink real fast. And 300, it's still going to be pretty fast, I think. And so then sleep, and then it gives enough time to actually make the box pop up. So enter sleep 300, that's for that one. And then we need to hit enter again, I think, right now for the save box. So send, enter. And this is actually going to save it. So sleep 100. That goes out enough time. Is it saving the box? It's going to go away. I don't think when you save it, it takes very long, right? And then increment the pages. Uh, increment page number. I mean, I don't know. Is that even needed? It doesn't like. Uh, plus plus uh, so now I think that should be what I need to do and then I want to try something else here we can put a run weight and run weight commands 
uh, with with a CMD, you can use these runway commands. And so what I'm going to try to do is call WSL from CMD, which I was trying to do that the other way around last time in one of my videos. And maybe I found a way to do it uh, one way, so pretty sure the other way will work. And I'm going to use another program, image to PDF. I don't have my Linux box open. Let me just run it. Ubuntu. And then if I say ls tma cd uh, jump mount c junk ls minus uh, ls archive, let's say. And so there's basically, well, rm, rm archive with 10x. Google search. Is there more than one of these things in here? Oh, wow. Uh, .html, and I guess it owns a folder, so rm minus r archive slash 10x plus archive. I got rid of that. We just have JPEGs left. And so now I should be able to use a like an image to PDF. So like I'm in junk, and there's the archive sitting there, and it's complaining because it's not saved. Oh, in the middle of typing a command, but whatever. And that got rid of the pound signs when I saved it. So this is a backup, and this is like a recovery for the, because I haven't saved it yet, basically. These right here are really, next time I make a video, I'm going to make a folder to put all my backups in for Vim and Emacs, because I can't stand this, like, being splattered around everywhere. I just like all my stuff to be in one folder. All my backups, I guess, so they're not splattered everywhere. Like if you're building web pages and it's putting these, and you're on the server building these web pages, and if it's a PHP file or something, they're gonna have you know someone put a tilde to be able to see the code, I guess. Uh, so here we're gonna say uh, image to PDF. It's just something you install image to PDF, and then I want to say output, and then. We're gonna to have to type this out. We don't have to right now, but in the command over there, I'll have to, right? So junk, and then I'm just gonna call it programming and com, 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 and then list dot PDF. And then the folders I'm gonna use is the C junk archive and star.jpg and so if I do this and I type ls then you can see there's a PDF here now and if we say ls archive it's basically just the page one page one page one so we have like five so we should have so so let me just go ahead and copy that first before I close that window because I will do that uh, that command worked. And so I'll just put it right here, I guess. And then the other thing I can do now is to say Sumatra PDF and then the C junk right here, right? So I'll copy that. If that command works, then we can see just hit right arrow. It's just, you know, you see the pages, they're changing right there. One, two, three, four, five. So it just created a PDF out of the five things that I had sitting there. I did copy that, right? So this runway command. So like if I put a slash K right here, the CMD box will stay open. The slash C is going to close it. And the runway command is going to wait for this command to finish running because I want to run uh the Sumatra afterwards. Whoa. I don't know how I got those many. Must have hit something. And so for this run command you put quotes. So I should put a quote here and then quotes around this. If there's like if your command took more than one parameter you could come over here and put like some other parameter and quotes like this and it'll be like you know parameter one parameter two and such so this command right here will fail 
if I didn't have this run wait because this right here would just run real quick and then it would start the like it would run Symmetra PDF and this wouldn't be done. So this run wait is going to wait for this command to finish. And I don't think I could do this with WSL, but because I can call WSL through CMD, it can wait on CMD. So CMD is going to run this and then this is going to run in the run on the CMD. And so this should wait and then I should be able to run that afterwards. Uh, PDF. So. Uh, now it's just a matter of seeing if the script works, I guess. So, uh, did I save that? I did. And then, you know, I'm just going to go to the top of the page, not comment this, and just try to run the whole script. Uh, how lucky we get, or I get, I guess. And just come up here and get rid of some of that junk. Which I guess if it doesn't work, then I might have needed those things there still. So hit Control U, LS. The first thing to do is RM the programming PDF, and then RM the minus R archive. And so those are gone. And then I'm going to reopen this window. First, let me make sure there's no TMUX is open. Okay. All right. And so, theoretically, I can just run my script if I don't get no errors. I'm going to go ahead and close this one. Wait. And then the, the main thing I want to make sure is I do have my loop turned off. So loop one. So, yeah, I'll just try it one time first just to make sure it's not going to freak out. Delete my hard drive or something, you know. Oh, okay, so now we'll say control one just to reload it for the heck of it. And then get the mouse cursor right here where it's decent and hit control F2. So, hit copy the URL and save that over here. Oh, you see how fast that was? I can't even see the save box really. And I copied the same, so I got the same page. Um, okay. Oh, you see, see what happened right there? I, it looks like I tried to view a page. So, Let's see where I was. Did I view a page that wasn't there, or did I try to view a page that I was already on? Okay, so look at my JPEG right here. So what I got was a format command stuffed in here, which this probably logged me out of the book. I don't know if it logged me out of the book on that instance, because it doesn't know which I'm trying to do, but it's possible I just got logged out of my book. I don't want to hit F5 though, because some of the stuff is cached in there. So let's just see if it lets me. It might freak out because of that. So usually when you see this right here, it's going to log me out of my book. I'm, I'm almost like 80% sure I just got logged out of my book. And so what's messed up is my format command. So uh, control S format. And what I'm missing is a percent sign right here. So. Uh, like these right here, you can go like this. A lot of times with these variables and stuff, see how it kicked me out of the book? <laughs> I told you. Uh, but this is kind of like a shortcut for that. Um, so basically, it kicked me out. And so here's the book again. So uh, I even show you this to begin with. So here I come over here and I borrow it for 14 days. Maybe now I could get away with borrowing it for an hour. So that's what happens if you look at the book in the wrong spot or try to look at the same page or go to a URL that doesn't exist or try to go to a URL that's not loaded yet. 
So the first thing I want to do is because you can't see all the different buttons right here is come over here. This is the view I was in. And so now I'll come back over here and make it like this. And right now I just want to check to see like if like right here, see how the page is now? These pages aren't loaded. So I had pre-cached these so you didn't have to sit here and watch me do this. And I just messed it up at the very, very end. Oh, who know who else who knows where else I messed up though? So you know, uh, this is basically how you'll have to like, so here's, see these wait times I have over here are really small when I'm going through this loop and normally they would have to be a lot longer, but I didn't want to sit here and wait for them. So I just pre cache these right here. So I guess the easiest way to go is maybe come over here. I'll just use them real quick. So let's just say if I'm in junk and I say them, I'll just call it test.ahk. And then if I go to the top of this file, I can download some of these guys right here, let's say control E and then alt W. And then if I paste this, set paste, and then right click in there. And then if I say like, color scheme, sort day, maybe you can see that a little bit better. And then right here, I'm just gonna say loop, loop it up uh, 322 times. Uh, we just wanna come over here and send, uh, right. And then close this. And then if I come over here to This window, I want to make sure my other, some of my other scripts running. So I'll just hit F2, it kills it. And then I can come over here to this window, let's say, and run this test AHK. And the same thing, I copied those shortcuts. So if I come over here, and did you see the numbers change? That's because I was holding it down. Sometimes that makes it funky. And notice right here, as I'm right here, it says 322 pages. Watch as I go through this, it's going to change to something like 302 or something. So I don't know if that's something else. Like if it just gets confused or if auto hotkey or if this book's like is confused or if like archive does something to, you know, try to confuse you or something. So if you're trying to do what I'm doing or something, I don't know, but, uh, I just want to make sure I'm so right here, definitely going to fill. So I need a wait. So see, I don't know. I'm going to say sleep 300. Maybe it might take a while. So you might want to double speed this part of the video. If not the whole thing, right? <laughs> Cause I'll talk forever. I don't even mean to talk this long. Uh, let's see. So control at one control at two. And so this is just going to try to go through the pages and see these right here. I was already hitting right a couple of times. So they're not loading. Now, depending on what view size, if you notice I'm in scale of four, so see these pages aren't loading by the time I'm going to the next one. So it's hit or miss. Hopefully they're going to be loading, but I might have to change that sleep. Yeah, and actually I had a pause, right? So if I hit F4, it'll pause the script. And then I can scroll up and see if these guys are getting, if these guys are going, right? So they are loading. If you go too fast, they're not gonna load. But I just try to time it, you know, I'm just trying to time it as fast as I can with uh, them actually loading, even though they didn't load before I went to the next one. And also sometimes they'll load. So if I sit right here for a second, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sometimes I'll load the next one but it might load this one, but usually it won't load much further. So uh, I can hit F4 to unpause my script. And I'm just gonna let it run because those were actually working. Uh, and you could probably hit F4 every once in a while too if it wasn't working and it, that way it will work. It's just, you don't wanna go too fast and it'll be boring for the video if it's too slow, so. Uh, now, you don't have to do this because you, 
I could just time my time my script. I put more time in my script, and then whenever I hit that right arrow, I wait a little bit longer, and then it downloads it, and it comes over. It's just I was trying to avoid this and download them real fast. So you'll see if they're pre-cached, how much faster I can go through them. And if this all works, then the book should download. And after it downloads, it'll convert it to an image. And then it'll open up Symmetra PDF and share the book. And the question is, will the last page be there with the little uh, loop thing I did? And so notice I looped 322 times, but only went halfway through the book. So my uh, sins aren't are going too fast, I guess. So back over here. Who should run the script? Like, oh, I was in the wrong window. It's like, what's going on? So I might actually like have to do that again because I think I was in the wrong window. It was over here hitting right arrow, right arrow, right arrow, right arrow, and I was in the right spot. And so here's what I was talking about. See, it's kind of finicky. But archive, like, dot org is kind of picky about what's going on because I'm only allowed to have the book one time. And so if I try to look at the URL, it's going to mess up. It'll kick unbar the book from me. There's quite a few different things that will unbar the book from me. And as you can see, one of them was going to the wrong URL. And if I try to go to one of these pages, if I was to try to go to a page right now, like page 200, if it's like, well, page 270, because it's not loaded yet. Since it's not loaded yet, it'll, it'll unbar the book also. So you don't want to look at a page unless it's the viewers actually cached it basically. And you really don't want to look at the same page that the viewer is on because you're only allowed to look at one page. You only allowed to look at the page like one at a time because you're only allowed one copy of the book, I think is why it's doing that. Oh, so it's kind of interesting. The other way to do it is to download the file that's some DRM type file and then install the Adobe DRM software. And then after you install the Adobe DRM software. So see right here, it's changed from 322 to 3, 303 right there. Uh, control Alt 1 to reload. Control Alt 2 to just, you know, tell it to do a bunch more. And then right here, you're going to see it's going to get the amount changed back to 322. But then it jumped up there real fast. So I don't know. Like, it's just a weird. I don't know if all the books do. This is the only book. No book have I ever tried to download from archive.org that had DRM protection. So that's a recent thing. Oh, so it's still going F2 to kill that script. I was hitting left and it was still going. So now I'm just basically going to go through this book kind of kind of fast like this just to make sure that there's not any pages that weren't loaded, I guess. So... If you go too fast and it does that, but like going left, it's not as big a deal. It seems not to mind going left. Like if I hold down the cursor, it seems slower than if I was tapping it, right? So I can tap it fast and I can hold it down on here. And it pretty much looked like the whole book was downloaded, so I probably don't have to do this, but I already wasted all your day anyway, so uh, I'd rather just this just work real quick. So regardless, it will take a lot longer for me to sit here and do this <laughs> page by page by page and save it myself. But the cool thing about this is now that I've done one book, then it'll work like this. Here's another thing. When you find something like this out, you probably don't want to tell everybody about it unless you don't care. Like, do I care? I don't really. But uh, if this, you know, if this meant something to me or I found something super cool, there's a lot of things you're not going to want to tell people because by telling this archive sees this picture or this, you know, archive sees this, they might patch their system or 
some dude that had a copyright book, like this Rodney dude might be like, hey, my book's on there. And this dude, like, could download your book. You got to update your security or whatever, you know? So, and stuff like this, you usually want to keep your mouth shut. But I really don't have, like, this is the first thing I've seen where I could be like, hey, I can use auto key for this thing, right? So, now that I'm done, I'll quit this. Uh, LS. I'm going to RM programming, and I'm going to RM minus R archive. And then I'm going to exit out of here. And then I'm going to make sure my script closed when I hit F2. And then I'm going to run the other script. And I want to say I uncommented everything. And look, the whole script's not too, too long. It's not really a really bad script. You know, I mean, the sleeps are ugly. T like, take the sleeps out and, and see how uh, short the script actually is. Like, half the script is just sleeps. So I'm going to hit control at one to reload, which I just load the script. I don't have to do that. It's just, I like to get in the habit of doing that. So I remember which keys, which to reload and run and pause and all that stuff. And so, uh, theoretically I can hit control two and it'll download the book. And it copied the URL. And we got the first page. The second page is there. Oh. Oh, really, really cool, man. I got two pages. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna do it. It's running. I was all excited. I'm so goofy. And so R minus R archive. And of course, exit and exit. And then go over to the script and change my loop. And I'm going to, yeah, basically just kill this line and then delete that and go XS and then close this and then go to the front of the book. So my last page is timed correctly, if that works. And then once again, control out one to reload because I changed the script to the loop and control F2. I'll move the cursor a little bit over there. All right. So hopefully this baby will run. And see how fast it's going. So, I mean, any time it could flake out. The computer, it flaked out. See it? F2, 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 F2. Stop. Uh, but it started to download the book right here. Uh, so somewhere it's just going a little bit too fast for it. And uh, it probably kicked me out of that book. And you can see that by hitting F5, which sucks because, uh, see, I'm kicked out of the book. I hope it doesn't make me. Sometimes it doesn't make you have to sit there and download, like, refresh all the pages again. Sometimes it does. So I'll just come over here and drag to random pages. So it looks like they're all cached still. And the last page too. So uh, I'm just gonna like take it for granted that it's still there. And then mm, like where where did I mess up though? So it's gotta be where we're saving it or loading the files. So uh we'll just say like right here, we're formatting the page. Let's just change this to 400. And then we're saving the page. Save this to 400 because it saved a jacked up page. So, and I'm going to change these to 20s too because it did duplicate one of those. So, I don't know. It duplicated one of the pages, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it looked like to me anyway. So, ls over here, rm minus r archive, exit exit and i know this is you know it kind of sucks but you might as well get used to this is the way it goes i had to rerun the script because i actually exited out of it and then you know we got to the sixth page out of 322 not too bad as long as it doesn't happen again it's not too bad but it is Then down there in the bottom of the Explorer, you can see where it says five items, six items, seven items. So we'll be able to keep count of all the items and stuff in there. 
And now you get to see the window popping up for a little bit longer. Uh, the URL is still changing really fast. But hopefully that wasn't a bug. Because I don't want to go in there and put sleeps in between all those uh, control left commands. But more than likely it was when it was trying to save the file. The, bo the box didn't pop up in time. And so it wasn't able to paste the to get the URL or something. It, but I did put those 20s in there instead of the 10, so it could have been one of those things. Uh, we're at 33. And, and then like right now, what if it fails? Is it better to just retime the script? Like it's probably better to retime the script. If you only wanted one book and you were never gonna do this again, then you might just change the loop to do like, instead of 200, do 100 or however many are left or something, you know? <clears throat> but it just, like the worst part about this is that now it's, you know, a lot slower. But, you know, who cares, I guess, if you get something that you wanted. And uh, me personally, I, like, I don't need this book. I don't mind just going in there and reading a book on archive. But without, you know, without me going and finding a demo of a ticketing system and creating fake tickets or me using Lisp and trying to build, like, a mock ticketing system or something at some point and then showing auto hotkey updating tickets and like, I don't have active directory or windows 2000 server or anything laying around, but we could create users in the WSL and we could probably create with PowerShell users on the system, you know, so you could, you know, I could make a mock system or something, I guess it's just, I don't know. It's more interesting for me to have a real world example rather than making up fake examples, you know? And so, yeah, definitely want to be sitting here, like double timing this at the very least, if not fast forwarding the video, I guess. Because this is just a third of the way done, barely. But it is sitting here downloading in the book so far. Now, I guess if you can read really fast, it's a good time to read the book. Maybe that's what I should be doing. It's just trying to see what's in the book. Well, also, I don't know when this book is because there's differences between uh, some of the old lists before like common lists. Some of these books, like I don't know if this one's one of them, but some of these books will have uh, some commands that are not in common list. I don't know. I, I, just, I wrote down a couple of them at some point somewhere on some computer somewhere. I might try to be able to pull that up sometime that there's replacement commands. And uh, I know on one of them, the command, there was a command that you could use that was the same as the old one, except for the arguments were reversed. So I guess there's certain commands that some of these old books have that the common list doesn't have. But if you go find out what they were, you can just, you know, recreate them. So some of them I recreate and then some of them I just found equivalent uh, commands that were named different and sometimes the parameters are swapped or something. So far, it hasn't been too many times I found that, but um, I want to say when I was playing with Scheme, the same thing happened. Uh, I used to get like free bus rides to work. And so I would uh, just sit on that bus and I was reading a scheme book. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a, it's not even that I wanted to, I'd rather learn common lisp. It's just, uh, the sysp, sysp book, sysp, I just call it sysp, but, uh, the sysp book, the wizard book or whatever, you know, it's like for MIT math nerds and stuff. And I don't know math very well. So uh, different points in my life, I try to go through the wizard book and I'm just not good at finishing anything, especially books. But then I found some, uh, it might've been called Simply Scheme or something. It was some book that was supposed to be a precursor to the wizard book. 
and so you would uh it was basically if you know if you went to mit and took all the math courses and stuff then you just use the wizard book if not you could use this book first and then it was like the setup to it but once again i never finished that book either so i don't know And so far, I haven't seen any duplicates or errors yet, so uh, now we're almost two-thirds of the way done. But, I mean, look how long it takes to sit here and do this whenever, like, now that I started this script, it's taken a long time to just sit here and run this script that does it real fast. If you're doing this by hand, it would be... Take a while. I don't know if it would have took longer. It probably would have took longer than writing the script too, but I don't know. Like probably someone over there could be some like alt tab saving dude real fast. And uh beat me, I guess. But if I was to go download ten other books or something then then the script was worth it, I guess. Even two of them. Uh, for me it's it's worth one of them because I don't know, it's kinda interesting. Like here I used auto hotkey to, uh, let's see, download this stuff, change the pages, but also I'm using CMD to call WSL, which this is the first time I've ever done that. And then uh, using auto hotkey to do the WSL. So this is like, you know, you could SSH into a Linux box and then control your Linux box with auto hotkey, you know? I mean, pretty much you can do anything with auto hotkey, but at the same time, you saw how like finicky it is. So you gotta be careful, especially when I was messing up and then the script runs over, it's in the wrong, like a couple of times I was in the wrong tab, uh, the wrong window. It's like I alt tab to the wrong place or I wasn't clicked in the right window. And it expects everything to be in a certain order because of the way I wrote the scripts. Now that's another thing though, is like I'm using Brave and WSL and CMD and Windows Explorer and auto hotkey can target target things. Like if Firefox is open, I can target Firefox. I can target stuff if Outlook was open or Microsoft Word was open or GIMP or Photoshop or something's open. I can say like, you know, jump to the window with the title of GIMP in it or Photoshop or whatever. So it is possible to do that. It's just this, you know, it's more of a lazy script because I'm just downloading from archive.org. It's not going to mess anything up. I mean, if anything, like I could freak it out and then they ban my IP or something though. But uh, so far, as long as you have the book cached or have the pages loaded, then it's not a big deal. And I guess at this point, I really don't have to download. I didn't even have to download the whole book, I guess. But I am curious if the last page is going to is gonna come down correctly with the little loop thing that I wrote. Or the if statement inside the loop. Because I don't know, like numbers are weird sometimes. You think you have it like counted right, and then, and then you're like one off or something. So 309. So 310, so if I have 322 files in the end, then I think it should give me the last one. So, and we're already towards the end now, so. And it's not a big deal just to go down to the last page manually if it didn't work, I guess. I saw the last page. So there's a CMD that popped up and then here's the book. So there it is so far, uh, all the way down there, look, all the way down, the 322, it should be a blue bag. There we go. So yeah. So just think of this as being, if it was a ticketing system and you go in there and closing tickets and do all this other stuff. Anyway, it's already been long enough. Ribbit.